I've gotten this question so often that I've decided to make an entire video on this subject. This is a battle between US dollars and Philippine pesos. Specifically, you've been asking me, is it better to invest in an S&P 500 fund in US dollars or is it better to do it in our local currency of Philippine pesos? This is what we'll look to cover in this video. We have a lot of angles to consider. So enough of this intro and let's go. But before anything, if you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Mark. It's nice to meet you. In this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. If this is the first time that you are watching one of my videos, I have made a series of videos on investing in the S&P 500. Why the S&P 500? Well, it is the benchmark fund that a lot of us look to. A lot of the other indexes are actually using the S&P 500 as well as their main benchmark. It's been historically proven that if you had just put in your money in the S&P 500, years or even better decades ago your money would have appreciated in a consistent way and beating out most of the individual stocks out there my main vehicle for investing in the s p 500 has mostly been through bpi wealth they have the u.s equity feeder fund that i've invested in in the last seven years i was happy investing through bpi until a few months ago when bpi doubled their trust fees from 0.75 percent per annum to now 1.5%. So this led through a lot of research, checking out BPI's competition, specifically BDO, Metro Bank, RCBC, and East West Bank. I've done a lot of number crunching on this as well. A lot of the data that I'll be talking about would be based on those previous videos. So if you want to have more specifics on that, feel free to check out the video later. Check out the link down below. So let's finally proceed to what you guys came here for. Let's talk about US dollars versus Philippine pesos and investing this in the S&P 500. The biggest benefit of investing via US dollars would of course be the potential for currency appreciation of the US dollar versus Philippine peso. I first invested in the BPI US equity feeder fund over seven years ago. And because I had invested in US dollars, from the baseline performance of the fund, my returns are at 57%. But factoring in the exchange rate, my returns are actually at 59%. I was able to gain an additional 2% from my total investment. In 2014, one US dollar actually equaled 45 pesos. Currently, 10 years later in 2024, the value of one US dollar is now 58 pesos. That's actually an increase of 28% for the BPI US equity feeder fund that both comes in Philippine peso and US dollars. You've been asking me, do they perform the same? Yes, essentially they are the same fund. You are just investing in via different currencies. The big difference, of course, would be in terms of foreign exchange. As shown here, the US dollar has appreciated against the peso. So those are potential gains that you might be missing out on. But of course, that's easy to say now that the peso is at an all-time low. Actually, with foreign exchange, this can work both ways. I mean, the Philippine economy can suddenly start surging. The US economy can also be going down. So it really depends on what's going to happen. I wish I knew. I wish I could let you guys know. But unfortunately for all of us, we don't have a crystal ball. We're not able to predict this 100%. But I guess one thing to consider, let's face it, the US economy, of course, is a developed nation. They have the right infrastructure, the right policies in place to be able to protect their economy to continue growing. While the Philippines, of course, we are still a developing nation. So while foreign exchange works both ways, historically speaking, it still might be better off if you are betting on the US dollar. Let's move on now to the cons, the not so good things about investing with your US dollars. When investing in a unit investment trust fund, a UITF that is in the US dollar currency, you would first have to open a savings account with your chosen bank. So this savings account would be the account where your funds would be reconciled when the day comes that you would redeem your investments. So it's always a necessity for you to open a savings account. The downside here is that it's expensive to open a US dollar savings account. To start an account, you would need $500 for most of the banks and you would need to maintain an average daily balance, an ADB of $500. So essentially, you can't touch those $500. It's not gonna be put in an investment fund. It will just be sitting there 
earning low interest. So that's one big downside. The bank that offers the best option here would be East West Bank. The minimum amount to open an account and average daily balance is both at $200 this is actually the biggest factor why I chose East West Bank over RCBC, Metro Bank, and BDO. And the second downside of investing via US dollars would of course be having the need to convert your local Philippine peso to US dollars each time. If you are earning via US dollars, then this would be less of an issue. But I guess for the most part, this would be quite a hassle for a lot of us. One of you guys, my commenters, actually told me that it was such a hassle when you did this with East West Bank. There's a rule now that you can only change your money into dollars if you're actually traveling. So you would have to show your plane ticket just to prove that you would actually need foreign currency. It wasn't always this way when I got started on this in 2017. I would fill out a form, I would give them my pesos and ask them to convert to US dollars. No real problem encountered. I think it was 2019 when I first started encountering this. There is that hassle that when you need to exchange your money through a bank, they don't make it easy. I don't really know why that's the case. Of course, you can go with money changers. I understand that the exchange there might not be as beneficial, meaning that you would lose more in terms of the exchange. So basically, when you invest in US dollars, there is the pro of potential foreign currency appreciation. But again, on the downside, there's the hassle to exchange your money and the hassle to opening a new account and just having some of your money sit there without really being invested. Let's now move on to the second part, investing now with your Philippine pesos. So fresh from what we just talked about, the benefit of investing by a Philippine peso is exactly that. You no longer have to convert your money and also not having to open a new account for your pesos, you can actually just use your current savings account when you invest in a UITF. By the way, I wanted to make it clear that it's only BPI that is offering a peso class. So the pros that we're talking about would be very specific to BPI. And the second perk of investing in pesos would be the lower minimum requirement to start the UITF and lower subsequent top ups. So for BPI, it's only at 1,000 pesos. And each time that you would want to top up, BPI actually says that there is no minimum requirement. So it's very easy to start and continue investing in this fund. In contrast, when investing by US dollars, BPI's competitors actually have higher minimum requirements. The lowest would actually be Metro Bank to start the UITF, it's $200, and each subsequent top-up is $100. Now with the pros out of the way, there is of course a huge downside as well when investing with your peso via BPI UITF. We've already talked about this earlier. Again, it's their issue with their trust fees from 0.75%. They've doubled this up to 1.5%. From its competitors, the lowest trust fees are actually with East West Bank at 0.5%. And this is the same with BDO, also at 0.5%. RCBC and Metro Bank have it at 0.75%. PPI's 1.5% is really huge. I mean, you might be thinking that it's a small thing, 0.75%, 1.5%. It sounds menial. It sounds like you can dismiss it. That's what I thought so myself. But when I crunched the numbers and doing that experiment a few videos ago, I did a computation over 10 years and regularly investing in the fund as often as possible based on the minimums of each bank. BPI with their higher trust fees, you can only get a return of 207% versus that of East West, RCBC, and Metro all playing around just under 214%. So there is a loss of about 7%. And if you're talking about an investment of over 10 years, that 7% is actually huge. I also shared in a previous video that I had invested almost $10,000 already in the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund. Again, I did this when their trust fees were low. So that 1.5% for that $10,000 would actually be $225 each year. But if I move it to East West Bank or BDO that have their trust fees at 0.5%, then I only would be spending $75 each year on the trust fees so that's actually a lot to give up, especially if you are looking at a long-term investment and putting in a lot of your money in the S&P 500. So those are all the pros and cons. What now can we conclude? There's no one way to look at it. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of angles to consider. It really depends on the amount that you are looking to invest in as well. 
As I mentioned, it's a lot of hassle to convert your peso to US dollars. But as shown in that 10 year span, you could have actually earned 28% more if you had just converted your peso to US dollars. So I know it's a lot of hassle, but that's a lot of money again that you are missing out on. I'd like to say that if you earn in pesos, just go with BPI and their peso class. But again, I'm not sure that that's the best thing. You are still missing out a lot on the potential foreign exchange gain. And again, you are losing a lot with BPI. With them, double or triple the trust fees for a lot of their competitors. So it's not an easy, straightforward answer. The conclusion, unfortunately, I will leave it up to you. I mean, only you can say what's really worth the risk, what's really worth the hassle. I hope I've been able to lay all these out to you so that you can understand the different pros and cons. But again, arriving at which you will pick, um, that's a call that you will have to make. And for me personally, why am I invested by US dollars? As shared in many videos ago, when I got started on this with BPI before, they really only had the US dollar class. The peso class actually just got started one or two years ago. But I have since then chosen East West as the home of my future investments. And full disclosure, thanks to you guys who are watching this, I am able to earn a little bit of US dollars so I don't have to convert my money. So yes, I am earning a little bit of US dollars. This channel pretty much has all my money going into the S&P 500. That's how much I believe in this benchmark. So what do you think? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing!